Hi, welcome to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky. We are here at Think Tech Hawaii. And I have to tell you that last week was a, an amazing week for me. Uh, I was honored by uh, Think Tech and uh, I received a community service award, which I really don't feel I deserve, but somehow they thought that it was a good idea to give me one. And the governor, uh, Governor Waihei, gave it to me and I just, uh, I felt very overwhelmed that I was to receive this award, especially after I just got the award at the Kids Her Two Gala as well. So it was, uh, it was an amazing week for me. I promised you uh, on my last show that I would give you an update on our I Beat Cancer show. Uh, that was one of our highest rated shows here at Think Tech Hawaii and especially for Seymour's World. And uh, I personally have been accepted on a clinical trial drug and if you look at me, I'm as healthy as ever. I'm playing tennis and golf. I'm doing all my foundation work. I'm doing everything that I want to do and I just feel that this could be the answer to eliminating chemotherapy for treatment for uh, cancer patients. So we couldn't ask for better uh, for me right now. And thank you for all the emails and the texts and the prayers and the blessings that I got from all of you. I mean, I, I was uh, overwhelmed again by the hundreds and hundreds of people that uh, wished me well. So thank you for doing that. Uh, today's show, I wanted to do a fun show. Uh, this show is about Christmas and Hanukkah. Now, you're asking yourself, Christmas and Hanukkah, two separate holidays, why? Well, I'm going to do it first by introducing our guests, and then I will explain. First, I want to introdu introduce you to Reverend George Scott, who is the chaplain at Punahou School. And also, you have another job besides being well, chaplain at Punahou yes, School. Well, yes, I'm involved with youth in many ways. So I'm at Central Union Church, right. and I'm involved in youth ministry there. I've been affiliated with that church for quite a few years now, and, and I uh, get with the elders at... Uh, Arcadia Retirement Residence. So well, I might be there soon. You know. Yeah, <laughs> well, we may all be there soon, so hopefully. And uh, also, uh, another guest is Rabbi Ken Aronowitz from Temple Emmanuel, who is a very good friend and also my rabbi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt that you two are going to be here to tell us all about Hanukkah and Christmas. Yes, we will. So, <laughs> it, you know, it has been 59 years since the last time that Christmas and Hanukkah oh. fell on December 25th. Mm -hmm. Is this a message that we must begin the healing of our local communities? In our country, in our world, that we must come together rather than divide? That we must give rather than take? What do these holidays really mean to you? What are we teaching our children? Are, are the answers simple or very complex? So I want to learn from both of you. I want to understand and help our audience understand that truly the meaning of Christmas and Hanukkah are both one and the same, and especially because they're both falling on December 25th. So uh, first, uh, Reverend George, tell us a little bit about what your feelings are about Christmas and Hanukkah being together on the same day. Well, it's pretty amazing that I, I didn't realize it's been 59 years. Yes. And yeah. uh, I think that with them coming together, perhaps it is a message, uh, and we can take it as a message and use it because here we are sitting together in, your, in this studio on your show, and it's an opportunity to share our, our common message of peace, hope, love, and joy for the world. And I believe both uh, traditions speak to that. And so it's a great opportunity for us to uh, pursue that a little deeper and, and talk to the community about it. I think so, too. Ken, what do you think? I, I think it's, it's incredible that, that both of these holidays fall at the time of the year where there's the least amount of light during the day. It's, it's the sol we're coming up to winter solstice, yeah. uh, I believe, next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here we are at a time where we have the Hanukkah, otherwise known as the, the holiday or festival of light, and we have the lights of the, the Christmas tree, which I hope that uh, the Reverend will, uh, Scott will turn on. And look ah, and there oh, they go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <It's a miracle. laughs> Let there be light, and here we are. It's a miracle. And so it's about also bringing more light into the world. Exactly. And I think that's a, a wonderful message and a, and a wonderful motivation for the time that we're living in. And I think, you know, the idea of the two holidays merging on the same day, and of course my preamble to this whole thing was, mm -hmm. can we help the, the world be a better place? Mm -hmm. Can we make it a better place by in working together on, as coming out together on the same day rather mm -hmm. than all of the division, especially in mm -hmm. politics and what's going on in the mm -hmm. U.S. and around the world? It really has been a very difficult year for us. Okay. So tell me, Rabbi, mm -hmm. uh, Hanukkah, tell us what Hanukkah is all about first. Well, Hanukkah uh, is the story um, as notated in the uh, book of the Maccabees of Mattathias and his sons, the Maccabees. They were living in a time when um, Judaism was in jeopardy of ceasing to exist. 
uh, thanks to Antiochus, uh, who was the, um, the head of the, the Syrian Greek forces, the Hellenistic forces. And it was a time that the, the Maccabees decided that this was not going to be the case, that they were going to fight back. And Judah Maccabee, who was known as the Hammer, because of his fierceness in battle, said, those of you who are with God stand with me. And those who stood with him overcame tremendous forces and were able to retake the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, to clean it up, to dedicate it, and to experience the miracle of the menorah uh, and the, the light that it brought to everyone, and, and really rededicated themselves um, to their faith, to their Judaism, and, and what that meant to them. What is the significance of the menorah? Well, the, the, Han the Hanukkah menorah actually uh, represents the eight candles representing the eight nights of Hanukkah, eight days and nights, with a, uh, a center candle called the shamash, a helper candle. And I think one of the beautiful messages of Hanukkah is that we can and should strive to be that helper candle to bring more light into the world, as we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And so when the Maccabees uh, were dedicating the temple and cleaned it up, they couldn't find any oil, because in that time you needed oil to make the menorah, the seven-branch candelabra, light. And they couldn't find any. And they looked and looked and finally found a little small jar of oil and thought, maybe it'll burn for a night. Well, the legend has it that it burned for not one, two, three, but eight days and nights. And that was the miraculous uh, element and, and, uh, and event uh, of Hanukkah. And that's why on this wonderful little top, this toy that we spin, this sivivon, this dreidel, there are the letters um, Nun Gimel Hei Shin, uh, Nes Gadol Haya Sham, that a great miracle happened there at the temple. And we're going we're gonna to talk about the dreidel a little yes. more. Yes, Because that's the fun part of Hanukkah, obviously. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a little competition a little bit <laughs> later <laughs> between the two of you guys and spinning the dreidel. Because I believe it's the most fun thing of, of the Hanukkah time frame that we have is seeing the kids having fun. That's right. Now, uh, George, tell us a little bit about Christmas. We know the gift-giving part. But yes, what yes. is your well, feeling about what Christmas really means? Well, you know, I brought these few symbols with me. And... Uh, of course, it's celebrating and commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ. Again, light coming to the world, a time when there was darkness in the world. And wait a minute, I think there's another light here. Does there we go. There's yeah. a light right there. Right. Yeah. Well, and uh, I think the beauty of it is, and the reason I brought these two, is the beauty is that uh, it's accessible to you when you can identify with what's going on. You, you know the story of Christ, we know the story of the shepherds gathering and the wise men coming and, and Mary and Joseph. Now, one of the things that I've been uh, really in, happy about is that this little Charlie Brown Christmas uh, nativity uh, really has opened the door. It's 50 years, Charlie Brown Christmas story on, on uh, television these days mm -hmm. now. And they thought it would be a flop. In 65 mm -hmm. it came out. But uh, I use this sometimes with students because we know the traditional story of Mary and Joseph, and, and they can sort of see it, but when they see these characters who are a little more accessible and, and there's a little humor added to it, it also makes it come a little alive. So again, as uh, Rabbi said, bringing light into the world, bringing light to pierce darkness, and sometimes even to pierce the places in our soul that are a little dark. And if you can have a little bit of fun with it too, knowing that Christ is why we celebrate. However, there are also ways that we can bring it uh, to life so that uh, it's more accessible to everyone. I think both of your messages are so germane to what I wanted to do here at this show. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, we talk about the marketing of Christmas, and both of you know I'm involved in that because my business is all about marketing uh, Christmas goods to the military. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I've always felt the wonderful spirit that I get at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. And Rabbi, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I love the Christmas carol. <laughs> I love those songs, I do. I put them on the radio and I listen to them for actually mm -hmm. the whole month. Now mm -hmm. it does get by the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, I may not add it up, but it is beautiful. You know, the songs are gorgeous. The Hanukkah mm -hmm. songs, you know, mm -hmm. when we sing, and you only do it once a year, obviously, right. and you sing the beautiful dreidel song, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I, I, I just feel the spirit is the key behind it. Mm -hmm. The spirit of giving, the spirit of enjoying, the spirit mm -hmm. of making Christmas and Hanukkah uh, a, a holiday that can be shared by many people. Mm -hmm. They're not separate holidays. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, the, the, do you believe in what I'm saying? Or, or yeah. 
I've been to my share of performances of the Messiah, so believe me, Chris, <laughs> you know, time music, it's, it's beautiful. Right, and and yeah, I think the, yeah. the city lights, I mean, we, we, we took our kids when they were younger. I mean, who doesn't want to see the beauty of, of lights? Right. We drive around to the neighborhoods that are all decorated, uh, you know, to the nines, and mm -hmm. it's, it makes you feel good. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I have to say, and this reminds me of a story that I'll, I'll, I'll share with all of you guys, mm -hmm. uh, my mother used to put Christmas lights on uh, her. We had a cedar hedge outside of our house, mm -hmm. and our house was right across the street from our synagogue. Ah. But my mother put up these Christmas, Christmas lights, lights, and the rabbi, there was an Orthodox synagogue, oh. mm -hmm. and my, the rabbi came running, and he says, Mrs. Kazimersky, you've got to take the lights off. That's Christmas. This is not Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. And she says, what are you talking about? That's a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Christmas. Anyway, she left the lights uh, on. She left the lights on. Because she loved the beauty of it. She mm -hmm. loved what it was. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, we, we talk about the marketing of Christmas and what goes on uh, in the world today, mm -hmm. especially at the store level and the internet level and the right. billions of dollars that mm -hmm. retailers depend on the marketing of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And as a guy who sells to a retailer, I have to tell you, it's our most important season. It's mm -hmm. by far 65 to 75 percent of our business is all done within from Halloween on to, to Christmas. That's, that's it. What do you guys think about that? What do you think of that? That well, issue. I think it's a, frankly, it's sort of a double-edged sword. I think that uh, this time of year you get into the spirit of, of a, sort of a light spirit. And uh, in that light spirit there is gift giving. There's, there's times when I think there are people who would maybe let you cut in and get a parking spot when you would, normally they wouldn't do it. Now, not just for that reason, but uh, it's a light spirit. And people are in the feeling of, in the mood of giving and giving gifts. Families come together. So that part is wonderful. The other end of it, yeah, the commercialization is pretty tough. And the other part, even going with that, is that uh, there are people who are sad at Christmas because they don't have money to give right. us. You know, they don't have a family that lives here because they live in, in another part of the, of right. the, the country. So it kind of adds, a, unfortunately, a, a little shadow upon them that the light is cast for others and is beautiful and is wonderful, but for, for those mm -hmm. who don't have family, don't have money, aren't receiving gifts. It's a tough it's time. It's a tough time. It's it painful. Is a tough time. It's quite painful. Yeah. Rabbi? I was going to say, Rabbi Scott, first of all, I want to know what shopping mall you're parking at. <laughs> I might yeah, share some challenges. Yeah. I've like, had some really... I'm not going to name names. People with but, Aloha. Yeah. A little bit of Aloha. But yeah. Hanukkah you know, doesn't have the... Um, uh, the, the commercial aspect quite as much, you know, it's Christmas, you, you talk about it, people talk about the commercialism of Christmas and trying to remember the reason for the season. Uh, but I think the, Hanukkah, if you look at the actual origins of it, it was a real struggle between uh, striking a balance between um, the secular world and people's uh, faith and sacred mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's um, really yeah, a commonality between that, both our faiths. Is we that, that challenge. Right, we exactly. That challenge. And, that, and this exactly. brings it out that time of year is how do you keep the, the gift giving and the gift buying as important as it is? It drives our economy. It's a very important thing. But how do you keep that in balance with the birth of, of Jesus Christ right. and, and right. what the uh, implications of that? Well, one of the things we're doing this year, and, and I, I really enjoy the idea is that we are going to do alternative gift giving in a big mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. You know, we've benefited. My mother was in hospice and now my father's in hospice, so we're going to give to a hospital organization. And, and then my son worked at a children's center in San Diego, so we're going to give to that organization. And we love animals because we have a therapy dog at our school, so we're going to give to them. So it, I think starting those, those small ways of right. giving gifts that would actually embody the Christian message and, mm -hmm. and the Jewish message of peace, love, hope, and joy. Mm -hmm. That's one way to begin. I yeah. think you guys got it. Maybe that's why you're the professionals. <laughs> oh, well, I'm the professional. But it's a tough sell sometimes. Trying. I gotta tell you. I, yes, you know. I have to tell you that, that giving is such mm -hmm. an important part of the message I give to mm -hmm. everybody that I work with in mm -hmm. my Make Them Smile program and you know everything that I do. Mm -hmm. And giving at Christmas time or Hanukkah time is critical. You know, the idea that you can give children in the hospital a few minutes of joy by playing music for them, mm -hmm. like to make them smile. Right. Or what Sue and I do at Thanksgiving where we feed all the foster kids, you know, who graduate from our program. I mean, it, it's the giving is, gives you a wonderful, much more than receiving. Mm -hmm. It gives you a great, great feeling and it gives you a, 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 a feeling that you're doing something for somebody else that really money can't buy when, exactly. when you can do something. Yeah, I think like you're that. talking about bringing Christmas or Hanukkah to someone who can't come to it. Maybe they're mm -hmm. in hospital or at mm -hmm. home. Right. And to bring that, that feeling to them and that experience to them is, is a wonderful gift beyond, so beyond any price, price so range. Too.
Absolutely. Well, we have to take a short break, okay. and then, Ken, <laughs> we're going to ask you to sing a song for us. I would love to. And I don't know if, uh, Reverend George, if you're going to help him with this. Or <laughs> he's gonna sing I'll, I'll, maybe I'll sing the dreidel song. Maybe we'll do something else. All right. right. It's an easy one to pick up. Yeah. Yeah. Very okay. good. So Thank we're going to take a short break. I'm Seymour, Kaz Seymour Kazimersky with my guests, Reverend George Scott and Rabbi Ken Aronowitz. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with really amazing artistic guests about what they do, how they do it, and the most important point, why they do it. I think, I hope, the show is inspirational for everyone. I know it's always inspirational for me. I'm also the managing director of Kumukuhua Theater, which is right next door, and I happen to have with me now Will Kahele, who is an artist. We just finished a conversation. I hope you can catch on center stage. And we work together at Kumukuhua Theater. Why should people come over there? Because it's a great place to see uh, plays written by uh, local playwrights. Why should people watch this show? Oh, because, um, because it's cool and it's uh, great things to know every week. And because, you know, you are a very cool hostess. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky at Think Tech Hawaii. Boy, did I enjoy the first half of our show. It was wonderful. Our guests are Reverend George Scott and Rabbi Ken Aronowitz, and we're talking about Christmas and Hanukkah and the melding of the two holidays falling on the same day and what we can do in our, in our local communities and our national communities to try to make the world a better place. And I wanted to, Ken, I was going to ask you to play something. Oh, I'd Would love you? to. I'd love to. I'd love to. Guitar? Sure, I'd be happy to. This is one of the uh, songs that I think most anyone who has celebrated Hanukkah has probably sung at one time. I'm going to ask, actually, the good Reverend Scott here to hold our dreidel, because this is a song about the dreidel. Yeah. We're going to play later, don't worry. He's really oh, anxious to play, no. I know. <laughs> Seymour's been practicing. I'm out of practice. I got I to. So, I have a little dreidel. I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I shall play. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Oh, dreidel, 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 now dreidel I shall play. It has a lovely body with legs so short and thin, and when it gets all tired, it drops and then I win. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. Oh, dreidel, 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 how dreidel I shall play. You picked it up. You're that was a great, great, and nice spinning. Now, uh, we are going to use this uh, in a little game in a few minutes, but I wanted to expand just one minute if we can, because we don't have a lot of time, on this working together. Mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead, you first, George. Oh, well, you know, I, first of all, I've had a, a wonderful relationship with Temple Emmanuel, and then now that uh, Rabbi Ken is there, we've, we've actually participated in interfaith weddings, and, yes. and um, mm -hmm. I've been to several uh, bat mitzvahs there, <laughs> right, and uh, right. participated in, in the welcoming students from our school mm -hmm. into the community mm -hmm. and celebrating their rite of passage. And, right. and we've had a great experience. I think it was one of my, mm -hmm. one of my most favorite weddings. Yes, was, my, was, mine is working mine as well. It was, it was wonderful. It was great. I think it, it showed everybody, you know, the, the diversity and, and what both Christianity and Judaism bring to the experience. Together, and it was right. done so beautifully. And uh, it's just, it's great for the um, communities to work together, as you mm -hmm. said, yeah. in a common goal. And you, really both, you both have worked uh, in, your, in your church, I was going to say in your synagogue, <laughs> in your church <laughs> and your temple, right. you've both worked to improve the lives of others, mm -hmm. right? I, I know both of you are very involved in not just church work, but you're mm -hmm. involved in helping, in helping others. What do you do, right. George, to, to help other people, other kids? Oh, well, involved with, um, we have a huge uh, community service, uh, public service uh, uh, base at Punahou School. So we even have a center, the Luke Center for Public Service. And the chaplains and the, uh, the people that run that center work together. And we bring people in from the community to talk to our students, oh, help them to right. understand programs that they can get involved in. And then the students just take off on it. And, and some of the organizations I mentioned, like Access Surf from the community, 
uh, we brought them in this year to talk to students, and it was just wonderful. You brought my group, Kids Hurt Too, kids, in kids as well. Kids Hurt Too, they've yes. been there to talk to yes, students. Yes, yes, which is great. And then it's the students... They get that light and it shines through them and then they take their light and help it shine in the world. And mm -hmm. same thing, Central Union, we get involved with the same. We, we collect money, kids will recycle cans and then give the money to a cause rather than take mm -hmm. it. And, and then we'll take kids on trips around the, the world actually and work in orphanages and, and work all around the country to improve the lives of others. Like and that's saying. what giving is. That's, that's what giving truth, is. Yeah. True. And I understand you are doing something in early January with 18 kids. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> am, well, am, I allowed to, am I allowed yeah, you can to? Say, yeah, Go ahead. school has uh, what's called now a G-term because our uh, final exams have been moved to prior to the holiday break, then there'll be this one week that normally would come back to school mm -hmm. and classes would begin, but there won't be formal classes in classrooms. Mm -hmm. There'll be classes that uh, the faculty are helping to design. And, mm -hmm. and the one that I put together deals with going to my old hometown, Detroit, Michigan. So I'm taking 18 students and uh, two other chaperones, and we're going to go there, see Motown, go to a Pistons game, visit uh, schools there. How old are the kids? What are they're uh, freshmen through... 12th grade. Oh my so God. So it should be really incredible. We're looking. There'll yeah. be snow. There'll be snow on the ground. <laughs> that's but that's they're the excited way it should be. That's right. the way it should I'm hoping be. that'll broaden. Yes. Mm -hmm. They'll broaden on both ends. The, the, those course. in Detroit mm -hmm. receiving it and the kids from Hawaii also going to. One's hopefully beautiful. will broaden beautiful. their perspective. Wonderful. Uh, Ken, how about you? Well, our, our education director at Temple brought us a, a wonderful idea which is when a child becomes a bar bat mitzvah, when they be, turn 13 and become an adult member of the community, they uh, choose some, something to do, some project. Um, uh, we call it Project Chesed, a mitzvah project to do. Mm -hmm. We have one young man who does magic. It took a page out of Seymour's book. Which, <laughs> instead of doing music for kids uh, in hospital and whatnot, he does magic. Mm -hmm. And so I can't wait to see all the projects that our kids come up with. We have about 15 or 20 kids this year who will become Bar Bat Mitzvah. Wow. And they're going to document their experience in, in photo form, in journal form, mm -hmm. and share it with everybody at their Bar Bat Mitzvah, what they've done. Oh, wonderful. And so that, that hopefully will engender that spirit of service in them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we can uh, go back to bringing our confirmation kids to yes. Temple Emmanuel. We've done right. that for years and years. In the mm -hmm. last few years, we haven't. Right. But we bring 8, 10, 12 kids that are going to be confirmed mm -hmm. to the, right. the faith. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. take them to Temple Emmanuel yes. for Sabbath. Yes. And they're there and enjoy Sabbath yes. together. And I, I love understand that. understand the Judeo roots of their tradition. I think that's wonderful. We so would we welcome any time you yeah, are able to. Uh, we've it. welcomed exchange students. We've welcomed uh, middle school uh, groups. Uh, mm -hmm. It's great to share que and answer questions about Judaism and, mm -hmm. and understanding um, promotes uh, you know, this connection. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. you can see what Seymour's world has done. We've already, <laughs> made, you know, we've already made a negotiating <laughs> arb arbitration. Right oh my God. Made a deal that shook hands and <laughs> things are going to go right forward. You saw it live. You're right? good. You're I good. love it. Now Ken, I know that the kids when they get bar mitzvah yes. and bat mitzvah, right. uh, they do something mm -hmm. for the community. Tell yes. us a little bit about that. Well, they, they do uh, all kinds of, uh, uh, we support the Hawaii Food Bank, mm. and so they'll help in our efforts with that. Uh, we participate in Family Promise, which mm -hmm. provides uh, shelter for homeless families who are transitioning to housing. And so the children take it upon themselves to organize and prepare our classrooms and change them into bedrooms for families yeah. uh, and help provide dinners and meals and all kinds of things. As I said, um, the Chesed project is in its infancy, so it's, it's exciting to see where it's going to go. And I, I think it's going to go wonderful, wonderful places. Mm. I Beautiful. think that type of community service mm -hmm. is what the kids need, what mm -hmm. our, 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 our children right. and our students need to understand that they have a responsibility, mm -hmm. not just right. to go to school, mm -hmm. but they have a responsibility mm -hmm. to the community. Right. And I think we need to do more of that. You know, mm -hmm. We need to have more students and more young people right. uh, uh, help, help the homeless, for instance. Mm -hmm. Go and uh, serve food at Thanksgiving and you know, different times of the year. Yeah. And what really hits home, I think, is when it's multi-generational. Mm -hmm. I mean, what yeah. you do, you, you model what service is all about, Seymour, with all the kids hurt too, and make them smile, and that speaks volumes to, to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. adults and kids. And I think that's what we need to do, to have Absolutely. projects where we can work on uh, the door of a door from generation to generation together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and surely there are more than enough causes and, and oh, things in, uh, that uh, people in need. And when you expose kids to it, they'll find something. They'll right. find something in there that maybe shines for them, and then they could pick up on it. And we've seen kids start uh, uh, track meets and things that are able to give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to use their gift and uh, perhaps a, a marathon. Mm -hmm. And then use right. the funds for uh, 
donating to a cause. Mm -hmm. And that's the commonality between our faiths and, and other faiths is service to something greater. And I think that's what, and especially children and becoming adults, that goes a long way in helping that transition take place. Mm -hmm. yeah. This whole show, I want you to know, started with a friend in Vancouver. Oh. And uh, Vancouver. She's, a, uh, she's a devout Christian. <laughs> and uh, she said to me, you know, I really don't know much about Hanukkah. Oh. And I said, well, you know what? It's actually quite similar to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not really, but it's the message that's important. Mm -hmm. You know, the holiday itself might be quite different, mm -hmm. but it's the message. It's the idea that we should be giving to others and helping other people and understanding that mm -hmm. we, we, we have a, a, an obligation rather than to take all these presents and all this sort of stuff, right. mm -hmm. give to other people. Make and I would sure encourage everyone out there, um, this is a time, as Reverend Scott said too, to gather together mm -hmm. and to really, those people who don't have family in exactly. Hawaii, especially for them to be part of the, the gatherings the for Christmas and exactly. Sonica. It builds community. It, it does. Really it it community. surely does. Yeah. Let me ask you about the, the, the future for mm -hmm. the synagogue, for the church. Mm -hmm. What do you see that we can improve upon? Mm -hmm. George? I think we can <laughs> open the doors. Mm -hmm. The doors should be like the, the doors of our hearts, should be mm -hmm. sprung wide open mm -hmm. and re able to receive the message that, uh, that not only the Christian message, but the message of life, you know, the message that we all mm -hmm. need an opportunity to be loved, everyone seeking love, everyone seeking community, mm -hmm. relationships is the most important thing that we can have in life. So a message to the, to the churches and the synagogue mm -hmm. is open the doors, open right. the doors wide, open the doors of your heart, receive. Right. Beautiful. And I think what, yeah. I, what I've been learning is that it's not and so yeah. much about do you believe in God, do you not believe in God, or you sort of believe in God. It's about come, open the doors, and experience mm -hmm. the presence of God through the, the presence of God within others. Mm -hmm. And then there's you. giving. With, when you open, that, you receive, you right. give. When you give, you receive. You guys are on it, but now we have to do something that I've wanted to do before. <laughs> oh, we have to do a little gambling. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to move this over I'm here. Sorry, I'm if we should gamble in front of them, <laughs> right? We're going to move this a little bit behind. Yeah, okay. okay. We have okay. some guilt right yes. here, don't we? Yes, we let's, do. You each get. Okay. Half. Now we're going to start. Okay. All right. How let's, do we have? let's. You got yours. All right. Here, I'll give you okay. some more. Here. What's this? Now? Okay. That's money. Okay. Oh, that's money. That's money. Right. But it's actually chocolate money. Oh, chocolate money. Yes. Exactly, chocolate money. You can't cash this in. Or something. Now oh, each yeah, of that. these, each of these represents. Uh, okay. Can you get a picture of that? Yeah. All right. Each of these represents mm -hmm. a certain symbol. Mm -hmm. Ken, why don't you tell us what they mean? Yes. Uh, Nun Gimel He Shin is an acronym for Nes Gadol Haya Sham. That a great miracle happened there, uh, meaning the temple. So as you spin, and I'm going to ask you to spin first. <laughs> oh, you are, you no you pressure. Would. You, would. <laughs> you <laughs> are either going to get all of Ken's money. You're going to give all of your money to Ken, <laughs> or you're going to get half the pot, or nothing is right. going to happen. Got uh, it? Go ahead. I'm rooting for you. I'm going for chocolate right here. Let's see. Come on. No, no, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait that's better than that. Come on. Oh, it's, no, it's coming. Okay. It's coming. Yeah, My kids do better than that. Oh, oh, oh come, on, come on, come on, come on. There you go. There you go. Oh, you oh, got a gimbal. You got a gimbal. That means you win it all. It's all <laughs> yours. You just won all of his money. It was that easy. It was that easy. Well, are you a pro are you a ringer? Are you a professional? Uh, You're just, just fooling us. Now we only have a minute left of the show. And Ken, if you could just take us out with music. Yes, I would love to. I want to say thank you to both of you for coming today. Thank you for doing this. Yes, sharing this. Well, it's what I do. Sharing the message of, of, mm. of peace and love mm -hmm. and giving back to our communities and our world. Mm -hmm. and I think Christmas and Hanukkah are two of my favorite holidays that do both the same thing. Yes. Ken, go ahead. And, and both these gentlemen them. exude all those wonderful qualities. So here we go. Thank you. Oh Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, come light the menorah. Let's have a party, we'll all dance the horror. Gather round the table, we'll give you a treat. You got it up. Dreidels to play with and latkes to eat. And while we are playing, the candles are burning bright. 